Hey guys, I'm here with uh, Sean Kiernan, one of the uh, very famous owners of this uh, bullet movie car. And uh, this is one of two cars used for the uh, famous uh, car sequences in Steve McQueen's uh, uh, famous bullet movie. So I understand that this car has changed owners many times. Um, do you know anything about the uh, previous owners and how did it finally end up in your care? Yeah, first owner was uh, Robert Ross. Uh, Honestly, he's the one that documented it from Warner Brothers, so that's the reason, honestly, at the end of the day that the car is here, is because he got Warner Brothers to document it, authenticate it. Um, he only had it for about six months, maybe seven months. And the funny thing about that is actually he had it in Hemmings for nine months uh, after he had bought it. Um, so it was for sale for nine months for $3,500 in 1970. So everybody had the shot to buy the car then. <laughs> uh, second owner actually didn't find it in Hemmings. He uh, was at a party and somebody had mentioned it. And he was actually a detective in New Jersey. Uh, his name's Frank. Um, <laughs> ironically. Ironically. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it, uh, he bought it 1970, 1971, right around that area between California and Jersey. That's how it made it there by train. Um, I still am in contact with Frank. He's an amazing guy. Uh, he put it in uh, Road and Track classified ad in uh, 1974 October um, and that's where my dad bought it uh, it was kind of just you know this car has been about timing since the beginning of it and it just happened my dad called Frank on a Friday afternoon and came and bought the car oh my goodness yeah and uh, so you actually made serious headlines when you came out with this car yeah January 18 yeah January 18th uh, can you explain the, uh, the existence of two uh, bullet cars and uh, what shot specifically would this car use for uh, so this one was used for about 95% of the chase. The other one was just for the jump. Uh, so you'll see the jump and then it bottoms out. Uh, they actually shot that three times. The first time uh, popped the K member on the engine cradle. Second time was the uh, oil pan. And then third time, man, everything just went. And so that car got parked. That's 558. And then this one ended up doing everything. Uh, so it was, you know, the banging back and forth at the end. The whole chase, the part you see him pull up and right before he steals a newspaper uh, in the beginning of the movie. Uh, yeah, this is the car. Uh, and you can notice it every time. The other car didn't have camera mounts. This one does. So it's got three on either rocker, two on the front, two on the back. And that's when you can see, you know, which one's which. Uh, the 558 car, uh, pieces of it actually uh, came alive um, right around April 17. Um, and it's slowly getting restored. Um, I don't know when we'll see that car, but this one's here, and she's 98% original. Amazing. And uh, so you said 98% original? Um, 98. Uh, what has changed on it? Uh, on this, the have to. So the brakes, the fuel lines, the gas tank, you know, stuff like that. And anything that I've taken off of, I still have. So yeah, yeah, I'm, it's not missing anything but the air cleaner. Amazing. And um, so is there any battle damage from the movie? Why well, I take it. You already answered that. <laughs> well, no, yeah, this this whole car, I mean, honestly, the whole right side's full of Bondo. So this is the banging back and forth where you see the damage between the Charger and this. They didn't replace anything after the filming, right? So uh -huh. no, it was all repair. The gotcha. whole right side's full of Bondo. It's probably got 10 gallons of Bondo on the oh right side. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> so everything's still on there, uh, just under Bondo. It's, I mean, every hole... Every ugly hole, every camera mount, every weld, every little thing to run lines and power, it's all still there. There's no hiding it. That's fantastic. Yeah. i got to ask you, um, a lot of times movies use uh, their own audio. Yeah. How, how um, comparable is the audio to the uh, movie with this car? Oh, very much so. Except for the, you know, going up the valley uh, with the, you know, 30 shift changes. Uh, that one was dubbed over a little bit, but no, when you see the car, let me tell you the true authentic sound of the car is when he spins out in the dirt and you hear it idle and then it chirps and when it catches second, yes. that's the sound of the car. That's it. That's this car. It's, a, you know, it's two inch front to back. It's got thrush exhaust on it, the mu small mufflers. And I mean, that, that's what it is. That's, it, that's the actual sound of the car. Holy cow. Now, legend has it that Steve McQueen contacted your family about buying this car. Right. Do you have any personal anecdotes about this? And did you guys get to ask him how he was able to trace this car back to you? And at any point, were any free autographs offered? Uh, no. I, the only autograph that came across was on the letter that he sent. Um, <laughs> he uh, actually got our information through Warner Brothers and then the second owner. Uh, he gave him my dad's info. Um, yeah, I mean, he asked to have the car back, but honestly, it, it was never Steve's to begin with. It was always <laughs> Warner Brothers. He didn't want it in 1968, and he was wanting to swap it out with another Mustang kind of like it, 
and the thing is is like this wasn't one of three cars that my mom and dad had this was their daily driver this is it this is their only car so it wasn't a means of swapping it he was in california mom and dad are in jersey i mean this is a logistics issue just alone and then you're going to leave my mom without a car i mean you know <laughs> and they already had the car for three years so saying no to steve mcqueen at that point was pretty easy my dad really wasn't one to be starstruck by anybody so yeah no is an easy answer gotcha yeah. i would have i couldn't say no to steve mcqueen. yeah yeah <laughs> so uh, your car your family had this car for about 40 years or so yeah. um during that car during that time this car was a big secret to the public uh, why such a big mystery? And more importantly, uh, why have you decided to sell this holy grail of movie cars now? Yeah, uh, so it's been in my family for 45 years. And honestly, in 1980, uh, the clutch started to have some issues. Um, you know, we didn't have the Scott Drakes of what we had back in 1980 yeah. uh, for restoration stuff. So between that and emissions in Jersey, um, the car got parked in 1980. And honestly, she sat in ja on jack stands in my garage. It wasn't. Uh, you know, on purpose, we're going to hide it. Yeah. It just sat there, and then the internet was born, and then things kind of rumored around it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, people are starting to ask questions around late 90s, early 2000s, especially when 01, when the uh, first Ford Bullet came out, mm -hmm. the tribute car. And, you know, at that point, car was on jack stands. It needed, you know, to be freshened up. Dad and I were starting to do a restoration on it, but we wanted to, to kind of control the unveiling of it. We didn't want the public to say we demand this car this is the way we want it this is where we want it at we wanted to control it because it's our car yeah. and then yeah i finally unveiled in january 18 was the 50th anniversary it was the biggest timeline since my father's passing in 2014 to be able to honor him tell his story and obviously show the car to the world along with the 19 bullet and yeah that was easy because ford brought me into the family oh, we God. collectively built the new bullet we did it alongside and yeah we made the news quite huge and honestly when I came out with the car in January 18 I knew that it was going to be big I didn't know that I would be doing 40 stops across the world <laughs> I didn't know that there would be you know I knew there was going to be a cult following I just didn't know it would be hey knocking on the door nine o'clock on a Sunday or something oh, like geez. that saying let me see your car it was you know I, I knew there was going to be something but I didn't know it would take over my life and I always the goal was always to bring the car back to the garage and you know, it's a modest two-car garage. It's nothing crazy. And, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, I'd, I'd like to go back home. And for me, I mean, I'm the one that transports the car, details it, cleans it. This car deserves a team of people taking care of it because of what it is for preservation. And also the perception of the car is you look at it, it needs restoration, but it doesn't. You need to preserve it. It takes a team of people to do it. I've been doing it on my own for my whole life. Oh, my gosh. And, yeah. Time, timing wise I mean the times now it's perfect my whole family you know they're gonna be here for the auction and what better way to kind of get closure on my father and everything and go down in the history books is hopefully the most valuable Mustang ever yeah it's it, at the end of the day it makes the most sense so the wheels tires so the wheels are American Twerth Custies those are your original wheels talking about preservation who knows what magnesium is gonna do 50 years later right yeah the tires, the, uh, the respect to the original Firestone bias fly tires, camera mounts on the each, either rocker, uh, like I said, with the Bondo front to back. Um, but beyond that, you know, the antenna got shifted from front to the back, the quarter to the fender to the quarter. And it's all because of the shot. I mean, at the end of the day, she's a movie car. You do what you got to do to get it done, to get the shot. And here I am 50 years later just trying to make sure that it gets done, right? It doesn't fall off and stays where she's at. But you can see that. I mean, the car tells a story from bumper to bumper. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have a question to ask you. Yeah. I noticed, uh, can you go to the back? Yeah. Oh, the, so I noticed um, your license plate says bullet yeah. with, a, with one L. Right. What, was there a specific reason why you spelled it like that instead of two L's? Well, in Jersey in 79, that's all you could fit on a plate, right? Oh, okay. That's all they allowed you. And uh, for my mom and dad's 10th anniversary, my mom got those from my dad. Uh -huh. uh, never put them on the car. Didn't put them on the car until I actually fired it up for the first time at 16. Um, that was the first time they got on the car. Gotcha. Yeah. And so uh, all this paint that we're seeing right now, it's all original? Absolutely. Yeah, every bit of it. Um, except for like the front lower balance. Gotcha. My grandfather in 79 backed into the car uh, <laughs> twice. Um, and that's why there's a new bumper. That's why the hood looks a little bull nosed on the front. And that's why the lower balance has been reshot. But funny enough, the weird twist to all this is I'm a paint and body guy. I've been doing it since <laughs> I was a kid. So 
as the preservation side of things, that's why it kind of looks the way it does. It looks preserved, but it looks clean. And that's why the body lines look the way they do is because I took the OCD side of myself that does the paint and body, and that's the preservation side of it. Amazing. So back to the unknown uh, period where the car was under your care yeah, yeah. for 40 years. Um, what has this car been doing during, uh, doing during this time? And any uh, favorite personal anecdotes that you can share about this car that hasn't been shared yet? Uh, the personal stuff is honestly is every time she fires up. Not only because I'm the one that built the motor, uh, or fresh in the motor, um, but I built the car. I did it, you know, all on my own. And the reason is because at the time I was doing it, it yeah, it was a secret. So I couldn't call up somebody and say, I've got the original Bullet Mustang. I need some help because all of a sudden there would be 50 people in my house. So I built it all on my own. And, you know, when my dad passed away, the only thing that was left on the car was the door, the dash, and the glass. And that was it. Yeah. The glass we didn't pull because of the Warner Brothers sticker in it. It would have broke. The doors, I think, weigh 300 pounds a piece because of the Bondo. Yeah. And the dash is absolutely perfect, so it didn't need to come out. So building the car, putting it back together, uh, that was the biggest part of it, was making sure that, you know, I did it. The wheels didn't fall off, you know, when I was out testing tune and everything like that. I think that the biggest thing was making sure she looked like Bullet, making sure she stayed preserved. And, uh, yeah, every time I fire it up, that's my favorite moment. What's it like driving this car versus, say, a modern car? Oh God! See, so I've got a 2019 bullet. Uh, I've got oh. number. I've got number two. <laughs> so jumping out of that one into this one, uh, obviously, I you know I absolutely love this car. Uh, I love driving it because it takes all of your attention. Uh, yeah. It's still bias ply tires. The suspension it was a one-off thing done by Max Balchowski 50 years ago. I mean, but the car, I mean, you smell like gas when you get out, you feel it, and then you get in the 19, you got air-cooled seats, and you're sitting there, and you, you really don't have to pay attention. The car almost does everything. Oh, yeah. So as far as back road stuff, yeah, two totally different things. This is raw and powerful, where the other one is more straight, narrow, and, you know, demand. when you demand it, it's there. But this, I mean, there's no better sound feeling anything on the planet. What do you hope uh, will will happen with this car? Is there any particular uh, buyer that you want to sell to specifically? No, I think that, you know, I hope that somebody buys it for the romance of the story and somebody buys it for what it is and preserves it and continues on this path that I've been doing for the past three years. I think that that's probably what not only means most to the public for the car, but what means most for me. Um, but the car deserves that, you know? Yeah. I mean, the car deserves... A, a team, a collector team, you know, to look over it, preserve it, air, climate controlled, you know. Uh -huh. She needs to be pampered. It's time for her to be pampered. But I still want her to, sit, you know, be out in the light and still everybody have a chance to be able to see it. So, yeah, if what I've been doing can, can be continued to go on down the path, that'd be great. And uh, one last question. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a company called um, Greenlight. They make yeah, yeah. die-cast cars. Yep. And there's an unrestored bullet car. Uh, did they contact you about... Yeah. They didn't? No, I don't approve that one. Uh, I'm a model car guy. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's what I, you know, when I was a kid, I was building model cars. No, I mean, uh, I'm not saying I don't approve it, but yeah, mine would probably be a little bit more detailed. Gotcha. I guess Gus told me about that. Yeah. But uh, any other personal anecdotes that you can share that you haven't shared with anybody else? No, I pretty much covered everything. Um, yeah, January 10th, around 1.30 is the time. And it's, uh, yeah, be feeling stuff I've never felt before. Oh, my God. Well, good luck with that. Oh, man, thank you so thank much. Thank you so I much. appreciate that. Oh, wow.